Hi guys, this is the micro break follow along workout for the lower back. We're going to go one round of this, I'll be doing the workout with you. So first exercise is cat cow on all fours, hands under your shoulders, knees under the hips. And what we want to do is inhale, as we arch our back and look up, and exhale, as we go down. For this exercise, we're going to go through 10 reps. It's quite a slow movement that we want to go through, and what we're trying to do is avoid the end of the ranges of motion. So we don't want it to hurt. We don't want to push as far as we can. We want to gently just mobilize the spine, mobilize the spinal cord, recentrate the disc, and just gently go through the range of motion there. Chasing the extremes doesn't give us any more benefit. It's better off just working where you feel comfortable. That's nine. We're at 10. From here now we're going to go into the bird dog and start stabilizing the back. So for this one, start by bracing the core like someone's going to punch you in the stomach. Slide opposite hand and leg out. Squeeze the butt, squeeze the fist, hold for 10 seconds. Keep the elbow locked. So two and one, slide your hand back in. Taking care not to shift from side to side. Reach out, squeeze the fist, squeeze the butt. Ab side. and slide back in. From here, what you want to think of doing is not letting your back arch too much, but keep the hips and the rib cage engaged. Squeeze the fist, squeeze, we're keeping full body tension. This should actually be quite tough. Two, one, and back. Drop number four. Good, now squeeze everything. The increasing the extra tension in this exercise increases a thing called irradiation, and come back. What this means, is the muscle contraction of the muscles in our back, 10 second hold, that we're using in this exercise we're trying to train, they're gonna get a stronger contraction, so we're gonna get more benefit from less time. Come back. And again, number six, squeeze the butt, abs, try and push the ground away as well. You're trying to create tension in as many areas as possible. Come back, we've got four more reps guys, so slide out. Abs, glutes, squeeze, push. Elbow lock. And then slide back in. Should be getting quite tough now in the shoulders as well. Reach out. Abs, butt, shoulders, squeeze. Two, one, and come back in. Two more reps. Sliding out, squeezing everything, maintaining that tension. Keep your focus for the last couple reps. And back, one more rep. Should have a light sweat now. And come back in. Now from here, once we've strengthened the back muscles here, we're going to go into a kneeling hip flexor stretch, to decompress the lumbar vertebrae. From here, the back foot and the toe. In a lunge position, tuck your hip under, drop forward. We're going to hold this for 30 seconds, so we'll actually time this. What you can do to increase the intensity of the stretch, for some people reaching up and over helps. It's totally individual, you have to experiment with it. I get the best stretch just by dropping the hip forward and keeping the ribs down. 30 seconds. Try and re-normalize your breathing in this one. In through the nose, rib cage feels the 360 degrees, so it expands in a circle and exhale, collapses in again. That's 30 seconds. Now swap sides. Make sure the back foot is on the toe. Tuck the hip under. Push forward. And we're going to retrain that breathing. So big breath in. Through the nose. 360 expansion. The rib cage and stomach. Breathe out. Compresses in again. Breathe in. 360 expansion. And out. Having that 360 expansion rib cage is going to help improve mobility of your upper back as well. 10 seconds left here. Make sure you're pushing that back leg in. Back toe into the ground and get the stretch. And exhale. And that's 30 seconds. Now we're going to finish off with a quick hip lift. So laying on our back. Bring one leg into the chest. From here what you're going to do is push up. Going as high as you can. Maintain your knees in the chest. Hold for one second and down. 
This one, what we're trying to do is we're trying to teach the glutes to be the primary hip extensor. Pulling the upper knee in helps us take the lower back out of the movement. What can often happen, is number six, is you can get some cramping in your hamstrings if you're doing this exercise. What that means is that your hamstring thinks it's your glute. So it's doing double the work. If that happens, we're on rep eight now, two more. Simply stop for a second, stretch out your hamstrings for 10 to 15 seconds, that's all it needs. Just a gentle stretch, and then re-go back into the exercise. What will happen over time is your glute will start to learn that it's the ideal hip extensor. Once again, it's in a better mechanical position. When you're pushing through the ground, try and push through your whole foot, heel, big toe, and little toe. This is number five. That's gonna allow you to get the best contraction of the glutes and take the hamstring out of the equation. Seven. Don't try and exaggerate the range of motion. Just go the way you comfortably can. Over time, you'll get higher and higher. Nine, last one. And 10. Okay guys, that's the lower back. Follow along, micro break workout.